The primary goal of forest management is healthy forests. What we do today affects how the forest will look tomorrow, so we always have to plan for the future. Forest management on public or crown land is dynamic and adaptive. It starts with a sustainable forest license, or an SFL. An SFL is an agreement between the government and a forestry company or group of companies, which gives them the right to harvest wood on crown land. The license holder is responsible for forest management planning, harvest, road building, forest removal, and monitoring and reporting. All of these activities must be approved and put into a forest management plan. The plan is for a 10-year period and can take several years to create. Sustainable forest management is the backbone of our practices in Canada. All management plans must conform to both provincial and federal regulations for good forest practices. Sustainable forest management requires that decisions balance social, economic, and environmental needs. The value of the wood in the forest is important, but so is wildlife habitat, clean water, and aesthetics. Public consultation, Aboriginal involvement, and adaptive management are all important elements of sustainable forest management. Public consultation plays a large role in Ontario's forest management planning process. A local citizens committee is required to assist each planning team with the preparation of the forest management plan. This committee represents a diversity of local interests. Basically the forest is broken up into various forest units. I believe there's about 12 to 14 forest units that, uh, that we have and we're only allowed to harvest a certain amount of hectares per forest unit. Uh, so we go through our maps and our forest resource inventory information and determine where these uh, forest units are located and then we put uh, pencil to map and start delineating uh, the areas that we're interested in harvesting. Of course they have to be within the specific forest units and be of a certain age uh, to harvest to, um, to correspond with our modeling. Uh, once we uh, choose uh, areas for, for harvest, uh, we, we add them all up and tally them, make sure we're, uh, we're representative of what the models allow us to harvest. It's called our uh, annual harvest allocation, our AHA as we typically call it, call it, and we ensure that we have enough wood for our five-year uh, forest management plan. Uh, we're responsible for the uh, renewal of the forest up until it, it's uh, established as free to grow. And there's a, a wide array of uh, parameters to determine uh, free to grow, but once it's been established as free to grow, then we basically let the forest be the forest and, and grow itself, and uh, we move on to other areas that we need to renew. A harvesting map shows where to cut and includes many important landscape features, such as water bodies, wildlife habitat areas, and unique or rare ecosystem features. In Ontario, all water bodies must have a minimum of a 30-meter buffer zone around them, where no harvesting can take place. This minimizes the effect of harvesting on the water, soils, and the aquatic animals. For every harvest, specific renewal and follow-up plans are required by law to ensure that the forest regenerates properly. Regeneration can be done artificially by planting trees or seeding, or the site can be left to regenerate naturally. Direct seeding can be expensive, but it is a quick and easy way to establish desirable species. Tree planting is one of the most reliable regeneration methods. A lot of care goes into ensuring that healthy trees are planted and the right species are chosen for the right location. Just by looking at the ground, you can get a sense of the layout of the land, the soil type, and the hydrology. It also helps to know what trees were there before. Natural regeneration is commonly used in the boreal because species are well adapted to re-establishing after a large-scale disturbance. Natural regeneration ensures that only the trees that are suited to the site are established. One such species is the jack pine. After an area is renewed, there's a monitoring period to make sure enough trees are growing back and that the right species are returning. Right now, I think it's about a 26-month process of actually preparing a 10-year plan. Different people um, involved that are called the planning team, and they consist of MNR foresters, biologists, land use planners, uh, company foresters, plan authors, silviculturalists, uh, regional specialists as far as uh, modeling, silviculture. Companies are responsible for the renewal until the forest is free to grow, that is, free from competition, and then it is left to grow itself. 
strong regulations and mandatory consultation with local communities and planning teams bring various concerns and expertises to the table, and strong laws ensure that our greatest natural resource is managed in a sustainable way.